As the atmosphere gets thicker, it gets warmer. And as it gets warmer, the atmosphere gets thicker, and the process just grows automatically. We'll need to warm Mars roughly 10 times more than we've warmed Earth with carbon dioxide over the past 100 years. But we'll be doing it with the help of super greenhouse gases, which are thousands of times more efficient than CO2. On Earth, we're not trying to warm up the planet. It's happening despite our best efforts to prevent it. Imagine if we actually tried to produce greenhouse gases, we maximize their efficiency for warming a planet and release them on purpose. It's not hard to imagine that we could do 10 times more warming than we're doing now. When the atmosphere thickens to the point where ice can thaw and remain stable as liquid, the pace of warming could accelerate even more. Phoenix found that a few percent of the surface soil is a carbonate mineral like chalk. Satellite instruments have picked up signals that these carbonates may be widespread over the planet. At the same time, the rovers have both found minerals that formed in extremely acidic water, virtually sulfuric acid. Today, the ground is dry, but it may still be acidic, and combined with carbonates, that could be a recipe for making carbon dioxide gas. To demonstrate, McKay mixes carbonate, ground up chalk, with simulated Martian soil containing dry acid, and then adds water. So when I add the water, what I expect is that the water will activate the acid, the acid will decompose the carbonate, and CO2 will release. And you can see it's happening. You see the gas is being released, it's foaming. I'm pleased to see it. It's not a real surprise. I expected it to happen, but still, when you actually try something and it works, that's always a good, a good thing. CO2 is being released. Gas is coming out of the soil. The components are there. The acid and the carbonate are there, but without water, they don't react. This could be the way we make a thick atmosphere on Mars. Just add water. McKay calculates that after 100 years of warming, most of the available carbon dioxide is out of the ground, thickening the atmosphere and turning the Martian sky blue as it scatters the sunlight. Ice thaws and water pools in ancient depressions for the first time in billions of years. As water evaporates, vapor builds up in the atmosphere and it begins to rain. In the colder regions and higher elevations, it snows. We can imagine that after 100 years of warming, Mars has now got a thicker atmosphere, it's got water on the surface, it's got clouds, it's got rain again. From space, it would look a lot like Earth. It would look like a blue marble. We would have, once again in our solar system, two blue marbles. I think that would be an amazing sight. Much of this new blue Mars would be an icy world, like summer above the Arctic Circle, with atmospheric pressure equivalent to a mountain twice the height of Mount Everest. But it would be habitable in a way that Mars today is not. The first phase of terraforming is complete. But the next step, turning Mars green and producing a breathable atmosphere, will be a much longer and more difficult process. After 100 years of warming, Mars is ready for life. But what could survive here? Martian soil is something called regolith, pulverized rocks and minerals that may or may not include all of the chemical nutrients required by plants. The Phoenix lander looked for nitrogen, the most essential nutrient, and didn't find it. 
but the signal may have been blocked by other chemical compounds in the sample. Unfortunately, we don't have any measurements that directly support or rule that out. But nitrogen is key. You've got to have nitrogen. It's got to be part of the ecosystem. Nitrogen was almost certainly part of the original mix of elements on Mars. And the explosive energy of impacts may have converted it to mineral compounds in the ground. If so, the soil could be seeded with microbes like cyanobacteria that can start breaking down those compounds and get the nitrogen back in circulation. In the process, they'll photosynthesize, turning carbon dioxide into food and returning oxygen to the atmosphere, paving the way for more complex life. So on Mars, if we want to have trees, if we want to have plants, if we want to have any life at all, we've not only got to get it warm enough, but we've got to make sure that the microbes are there doing their microbe thing, making their microbe nutrients that the trees need to grow. Even after 100 years of warming, some parts of Mars would still be like the summit of Orizaba, a polar desert too cold and dry for any kind of plant life. Higher elevations and latitudes on Mars might never get past this stage. But lower elevations closer to the equator would be warmer and wetter, more like the lower slopes of the mountain. And on the way down, we can follow a virtual timeline of the planting schedule on Mars as the planet warms up. The first plants appear at about 17,000 feet. These are lichen. They grow on the surface of this volcanic rock, and they're part of the first step that turns this hard rock into soil. The organisms are sliding their way under the rock, and they're living inside there because it's a slightly warmer, wetter environment. To, to those organisms, this rock is like a little greenhouse. But by living inside it, they destroy their very house. They release acids, which cause the rock to fall apart and flake off. Bits of rock fall to the ground. Life is playing a role in creating an environment suitable for life. And this weathering is the first step in that transformation. Around the same elevation, there's moss. Looks like a moss monster eating some rocks. In a sense, that is what's happening, though. These moss and the lichens, they're attacking this volcanic rock. They're turning this mountain into dirt. It's a really hardy little organism. It can survive the high radiation, the low temperatures, make use of very little water. But most importantly, what it does is it photosynthesizes. It takes sunlight and makes plant material. It makes organic material. That material then goes into the soil and fertilizes the soil. These guys can take a mountainside and turn it into a garden. They'll be the first imports of plant life from Earth, perhaps 50 to 100 years after warming begins. Lichens and moss thrive on carbon dioxide and get what nutrients they need from partnerships with microbes and photosynthesis. They build soil, help create more nutrients, and set the stage for what comes next. At about 15,000 feet on Orizaba, we find grass. The ecosystem is called tundra on Earth, a mix of grass and woody shrubs, along with lichens and moss. As the plants grow and die, they enrich the soil and hold more moisture in the ground. Then, at 13,000 feet, where it's a few degrees warmer and there's a little more oxygen, tundra gives way to the tree line, a crucial milestone in turning Mars into a truly habitable world. So the tree line is the key. That's what we need on Mars, because trees and forests